I'd like to talk about, again, basically R, L, and C circuits, and where I have a very interesting topology with the C, the R, and the L. Now, this tends to be considered a high-pass topology, which tends to mean that when I have inputs uh, going into this, I pretty much get the higher frequency or the bigger change components coming out. Now, I might see that if I were to put a step on the input here and then look at the output. The step on the input will go there. I will see the output respond almost instantaneously, and then it will restore back to equilibrium. It'll have some sort of tau. It'll potentially have some sort of ringing to print in the cube. Now, I could solve this particular system in a straightforward way by basically, again, talking about this being a voltage divider, where I'm going to have an SL as the one term, and then I get C and R. So if I put all those together, I'm going to get this sort of straightforward transfer function of L and C and R. And from that, I can then figure out what is both my time constant, which is then going to be the square root of LC, and then I can also figure out what my Q is, which is going to be related to R and L primarily. Again, remember you talk about that as the, what is the quality factor of my inductor because it's often the most kind of uncertain element when I'm dealing with passives. So you think, okay, I can look at the step response. And again, remember, step response is a thing that you can easily measure. It's a straightforward thing to come up with when you put these together. And so it's really important to look at the step response, interpret it. It's really important from a commercial standpoint because I can measure step responses very easily and quickly. Frequency responses are more costly because they take longer and they just require much, usually more infrastructure unless I've kind of thought through this question carefully. So, but I can then talk about what is the frequency response. And if I look at this, I'd know at a very high frequency, it pretty much gives me, I pass the signals through. This was, this was plotted for a Q that's a little bit lower than what I see here. We're talking about a Q now much closer to about a half or so. And what I ended up seeing is that it kind of crosses through a certain spot and then drops off quickly. And again, it'll drop off as S squared. Or you might imagine it increases as S squared. S squared is a second derivative. So to, it's really important to think about this sort of region is basically when the circuit is acting like a second, as a second derivative. Kind of a cool way to think about what could be happening. You can see this in the phase because it'd be, you know, sort of right about 180 degrees. So sort of you see happening because of the first integration and the second integration. Remember, there's a J that comes into play when I'm doing frequency response. Now I can talk about this as 40 dB per decade. Again, be careful about looking at things as just kind of remembering terms. This term gets used a lot, but it's important to know what this means. Basically, if you'd say I need to look at something as like, okay, if I increase the frequency by a factor of 10, I will increase the resulting amplitude by a factor of 100. That's what 40 dB per decade means. Increase by a factor of 2 in frequency, I increase by my output by a factor of 4. And what I notice is when I get all the way to the high frequency, my phase goes down to zero because it looks like it's just passing it through. And right at the sort of the corner, fre corner frequency is when everything is sitting at about 90 degrees. And so that's it's right at the middle. And so it's kind of interesting to see the high pass structures. You might think that the low pass structures are more typical, but what you find is that in so much of what we compute, we want high pass structures because in the end, I care about what changes. I don't care about things that are just being sort of flat and not moving. I care about the signals that change. I don't really care as much about my biasing that doesn't move as much.